Here we go. All right. Okay. Three, two, one. Hey, my good friends. Sam Haymart for Test Driven TV. Today we're test driving the 2018 Volkswagen Beetle Convertible. We're downtown in Phoenix. We're going to do a top down review. It's winter time, so I'm sort of dressed a little bit warmly, but we had to have the top down for the review. So I'm going to show it to you inside and out, take it for a quick test drive here, and I'm going to tell you what I really think. The Volkswagen Beetle is really an iconic car and for 2018 the styling is just the same as, well, it has been for some time. It's that familiar iconic shape that we've come to know for, well, well over 50 years. It's evolved, it's changed, it's gotten larger, it's gotten this, it's gotten that, but at its core, it's still the Volkswagen Beetle. And the model I'm test driving today is an S model. This is the Beetle S convertible. It's the base grade. And so, even in the base grade, it comes pretty well equipped here for North America. We've got 16 inch alloy wheels. This is the really bright color of bottle green. Oddly enough, it's very reminiscent of Hunter Green from the 1990s. In fact, if I'm honest, I'm having a hard time kind of separating this from the images and pictures of those gold package cars that were all over the place in the 90s. That hunter green with the tan interior and a gold package of emblems and chrome wheels and the whole nine yards, but that's just aging me a little bit. This is a very beautiful color and, well, I'm doing my best to be color coordinated here with it today for our review. So, this does have a power top. It goes up and down at speeds up to 31 miles per hour. So you can actually put that up or down while you're driving. You don't have to be stopped with the emergency brake on like cars of the past had to be. You can actually do that on the go if you're in traffic. Heated seats are standard. In this particular car, we've got the base interior, which is the VTEX vinyl seats. Looks very much like leather, and if I'm honest, it feels like leather too. They're very comfortable seats. It is a pretty well-equipped interior for being a base grade car. I've got a leather wrapped steering wheel here with full functions when it comes to the buttons on the steering wheel for the instrument cluster and for the audio system here. And it does have a tilt and telescoping feature. I love the body color accents here, especially with this bottle green. When the sun hits it when you're driving around, it just shimmers with metallic luster. I love it. And the back seat, while it's not the most comfortable place in the world, you can put adults back there. And those seats do fold down in a 50-50 split, so you can get access to the trunk. And the trunk, not that big, let's be honest. It's a convertible. You lose a lot of space when you put that top mechanism there and actually close this otherwise hatchback coupe into a convertible. So this generation Beetle has had a pretty good level of material quality and overall fit and finish on its interiors. The only thing is down here in the door pocket, we've got sort of a, a mesh material that, that acts like an expandable band that does start to fray and look old after time. Now, when it comes to driving the Beetle, this is a car that's been around for a while and it's based on the Volkswagen A5 architecture, which is to say, this is a chassis that's been around for a while. It's not the latest, greatest MQB chassis that underpins all of the latest models from Volkswagen. And therefore, this car's probably got an expiration date on its tow tag. Not likely to be around for more than another year or so. So if you want one of these, you really need to look into getting one now. But A5, what does that mean? What we have here is a chassis that's got struts up front and it has an independent rear suspension, the upper grade version of the A5 chassis. Just because it's not the latest greatest doesn't mean it's not good. This has a nice German feel to it. It's very solid. And as I'm driving here through my neighborhood, we always have these things called speed humps. And these, they're a great way to test how solid a car is because especially in a convertible, they're really going to show you does it handle bumps, does it twist, and does that suspension soak these things up. And it does it very well. This car feels solid, very much like you find with a car with a roof. And driving around town, you can tell this actually has a very quiet ride inside too. Very little buffeting. It's a great way to let the sun shine in. So this chassis has always been good. I've always rated it very high and it continues to impress me with its overall level of refinement, its solidity, and basically what you're looking for when you're getting into the German driving experience. Chassis gets five out of five stars. 
So the big question I always ask is how does it go? Power is adequate. Power is adequate. So what does that mean? That means that it's got enough power to be a daily driver car that you go out and have fun with once in a while. If you're looking for the same level of performance that a lot of people remember with the 2.0 R-Line turbo before, you're, you will be just a little bit disappointed because this engine's designed for fuel economy, not horsepower. It does have quite a bit less horsepower than that engine did. And as it is tuned for fuel economy, it's also got something else, and that's a little bit of a lack of refinement. This is what they call a Budak cycle engine, very similar to the Atkinson cycle. Uh, this is tuned for the utmost in fuel economy, so it's a little bit rougher, it's a little bit noisier, and the way they have the throttle and this automatic transmission tuned here, it's, it's designed to keep the engine at low RPM. It, this transmission... This transmission is forever bogging this engine to try to keep it from revving out and keep you from really letting it roll and let it rev. So uh, it's all about fuel economy. I'm pretty disappointed in that, I have to say, because uh, you know it's just not as refined as the old 1.8T or the 2.0T. This is an engine that is a compromise engine. Fuel economy, this is rated at 29 MPG. That is the other disappointment. In my week with it, I only achieved 24 MPG actual mileage as done by filling it up and doing the math. All the while, the dash instrument cluster is telling me I got 29. So uh, we've got a dash instrument cluster that's not telling me the truth. I've got an engine that's noisy and rough, not the refinement of Volkswagens I've expected in the past. And I have a transmission that's fighting me every step of the way. Now, I do put it in sport. That does help a little bit. but. Uh, for the most part, this is a powertrain that's a little bit of a buzzkill while being buzzy at the same time. This powertrain gets three out of five stars. Now let's talk about quality for a moment because Volkswagen always gets bagged on very hard about their quality, especially in those YouTube comments down there. And if I'm honest, I've never quite understood that. I have owned over a dozen Volkswagens in my lifetime and I just don't get the quality thing. They've not been unreliable cars for me. They're built very well and like this one right here that I've tested, the fit and finish, always very good. These doors, they slam with a solid dunk and Yes, you get a check engine light once in a while, but most of the people that are doing comments down there are typically Ford and Chevy owners, and I, I don't get how you can own one of those cars and bag on Volkswagen for quality. I mean, come on, be honest with yourself. So that said, very impressed with the quality here, and with the new warranty, 672, you don't have to worry about those check engine lights quite as much. So quality here, very good. Uh, very impressed as usual. Five out of five stars. Um, all right, my friends, let's wrap it up here. So I'm a Volkswagen guy. I've owned several Beetles. I own one right now, a new Beetle, not this generation, but I'm a Volkswagen guy, so I like them. And I've always loved this particular car. It's been on my buy it list before, and I totally buy one. Now, would I buy this one? No, I have to pass on this one, the 2018, because this powertrain and I just, we don't get along. And we talked about that. But outside of that, the rest of this car is a wonderful life experience, top down. It's got a nice German driving feel. It's built of very good quality. It's got a better warranty this year. So if you're worried about Volkswagen check engine lights, you don't have to worry anymore. You can keep it for a while and then sell it off when you're worried about it. But you know, check engine lights are just something that Volkswagen owners have come to take as a badge of honor. It's okay, just it's just a light. Now all kidding aside, Quality's very good here. The engineering's good, handling's good. I love the styling. I'm one of those, I'm sorry, I just love it. What can I say? So value here, I think we've got a great level of equipment at this price. You can spend a lot more money, you can add a lot more stuff, tech, you can have headlights, wheels, all of that, leather interior. Um, that's there for you if you want it. I happen to be very happy with this car as it sits, even here in the base grade for just under $27,000. So value, I put it five stars. When you put that in with everything we've already talked about, we're four stars for the review. Very good. Have a nice day. All right. Willow, this is Vernon. This is Encanto. Whee! <laughs> this is fun to drive. All right, my friends, if you enjoyed the test drive, I invite you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can do that by clicking on the big round logo right there. And if you're not quite ready to commit, click on the big square right there. 
speed hump see our latest video either way stay tuned